Hi, welcome to the next part of building the tube board. In this segment, I'm going to be covering these plywood parts with carbon fiber to make a sandwich panel structure that's significantly stiffer than the original plywood and is also very lightweight. As you can see, one of the sides is already done. I'm also going to be talking about the details of how I vacuum bag these things. Because I hear a lot of people online say that they don't want to get into vacuum bagging because it sounds challenging or because they don't like the size of the investment required to get started in. So I'm going to show how I get some very nice results out of these parts with a $25 vacuum pump and about 20 more dollars of consumable materials that last me throughout the course of the project. So I'm going to get to it. The first rule of doing any work with composites is to wear as many pairs of rubber gloves as you can physically fit onto your hands. The first rule of doing any work with composites is to do all of your preparation before you start mixing your resin. Because once these two parts get mixed, you're on the clock and there's no way out but forward. And if you're anything like me, under those conditions, you can slip up. So, I have all of my materials measured, cut out, and laid down on my table within easy reach and in the order that I'm going to need them. I'm going to be using the transfer method here, in which you lay up the, the composite fabrics onto a disposable sheet of plastic drop cloth so that the, all the layers get stuck together by the wet resin and they're easier to move around. In addition, when you peel off this transfer layer, it takes some of the resin with it so the parts will end up a little bit lighter. The first step is going to be to lay these carbon fabrics down on the transfer layer, mix up some epoxy, and apply it with a squeegee. Then I'm going to transfer the layup onto the consumable materials which in this case is a layer of peel ply, a special fabric that doesn't stick to epoxy so it can be removed after the epoxy is cured, and a breather layer to absorb excess resin and to allow air to flow inside the vacuum bag so that the vacuum pressure gets equally distributed. In this case, it's just paper towels. And I have a final layer of plastic drop cloth just to make sure that once the breather layer gets soaked with resin, it doesn't stick itself to the inside of the vacuum bag and make things inconvenient. After these parts are cured, they should be about equal parts carbon fabric and resin by weight. So I've mixed up around 50% more resin than that to account for waste. Whenever you mix up a cup of epoxy, you should always stir very thoroughly and scrape the sides of the cup to make sure everything gets incorporated for about three solid minutes. If you don't, the epoxy might not cure fully. So remember, always do three minutes. Or, if you do things the way I recommend, about three seconds. mixed, I want to make sure I get it out of the cup as fast as possible because having this much epoxy resin in one spot can make itself overheat. The reaction produces heat, heat makes it react faster, and things can get out of hand pretty quick. So I'm going to sp spread it out over a large area as fast as I can. Use the reflection of the light from my lamp to check that every spot has been wetted and there's no dry spots left, I'm going to try to squeegee out as much of the excess resin as I can and put on the next layer. transfer step where I put the peel, the breather, and the last layer of drop cloth 
onto the lamination and remove the transfer layer. Alright, now the actual parts go onto the lamination. I got, I'll cover everything else in one more layer of drop cloth to cover up all of the wet resin so it doesn't stick to anything, and then put it in the vacuum bag. All the wet resin has been covered up, so I'm going to put it in the vacuum bag now, which I've prepared before I started this, with one end of the tube already sealed up with tacky tape before I started, and the other end halfway sealed up, but with the wax paper still on the tacky tape, so that I don't have to install it while everything is inside. setup. It's the cheapest vacuum pump you can possibly find on Amazon. It costs about $20. A piece of quarter inch tubing from a hardware store, and a piece of spiral cable wrap coming off the end of the tube, which serves to run down the length of the lamination and give the air inside a, an open path to escape. tacky tape is all squished down, so I'm going to connect the pump to 12 volt DC and suck this down. I've temporarily stopped the pump now that all the air has been removed, just so I can check by ear if there's any air leaks hissing away at the seams. It all seems to be good, so I'm going to keep the vacuum pump running, weigh these parts down so they're flat to the table when they cure, and come back in a couple of hours when the epoxy is halfway cured to cut these out with a knife. The epoxy is halfway cured now, so it's turned from a liquid to a solid, but it's still mushy. That means it's going to be easy to cut with a knife, and it's going to leave a clean edge instead of fracturing and being brittle. So I'll cut this out of the vacuum bag now, cutting away only the tape so that I can reuse the bag, and then I'll slice these parts out of the main sheet. Now all the extra carbon fiber has been trimmed away, so I'm going to put these back in the vacuum bag and keep them under suction until the epoxy is fully cured. And that's that. All of the sandwich panel parts are complete now. I did the rest of the parts for the board with the same process that I showed in this video and in total it was four vacuum bagging operations. I'm really happy with how all these parts turned out. The weight has been increased by about 50% compared to the original plywood, but the stiffness has been increased by about a factor of 10. So that just goes to show how great these composite materials are, and they're absolutely solid. They're going to take a beating. They're waterproof now, I assume. At least I think I didn't leave any gaps. So it should make a great board. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.